Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So in this video, we're going to learn about cycle detection in a directed graph using the BFS algorithm. Now, in the previous video, we have done that using the DFS algorithm, but how to do that using the BFS algorithm. So if you remember in the DFS, we used something like a visited and then we use something like a path visited. Now in the backtracking, we reset the path visit, but in BFS, there cannot be a backtracking. So how do we implement a similar sort of algorithm into BFS? So this is where something like the Kant's algorithm comes in. So if you haven't uh, checked out uh, my video on topological sort using BFS, please go back and learn this algorithm and then come back and watch this. Okay. It's uh, just uh, before this video in the playlist that you're watching right now. So how do you uh, solve this particular problem? So what I'll do is this is a directed cyclic graph. Can I say this is a directed cyclic graph? So if you've seen the previous video on topological sort using BFS, you know that topo sorts are only applicable on DAX. You know this, any of the topo sort is only applicable on a DAG, which is directed a cyclic graph. If it isn't a, a cyclic graph, it won't be applicable. But this graph has a cycle. If you carefully see, this graph has a cycle and you need to tell me that yes, it has a cycle. So how do you detect it? So what I do is since I know a topo sort is not possible for a graph that has a cycle, I'll still try to apply topological sort to this. Yes, I'll, 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 I'll still try to find the topo sort for this graph. Okay. Let's uh, try out. So what is the Kant's algorithm? It's very simple. Initially find the in degrees of all the nodes. So I'll try to write the in degrees over here itself. Zero because there is no incoming nodes. So zero for this. How many incoming are there? One and two. So two for this. How many incoming on this? So I see there is only one guy incoming. So one. How many incoming on five? Can I say it's zero? Sorry, it's one again. How many incoming on four? If I carefully see uh, incoming on four is one, so I can just write it as one. Perfect. So I've written the in degrees of all of these nodes. Now, what was the algorithm stating? The algorithm always stated initially start with a Q data structure. So let's start off with a Q data structure. And in this Q data structure, initially keep the node with the in degree zero, which is the one. Okay. Now let's start the algorithm. So the algorithm states gets the first node and you can put that into the topo sort array. So let's put it for node one, who are the adjacents? So the adjacent is two, go to two and reduce its in degree by one. So this will become one. So we're done. Now what happens is the moment you reduce its in degree by one, the moment you reduce its in degree by one, the in degree is one and the queue is empty. The queue is empty and the topo sort just has one guy. The topo sort <laughs> just has one guy. Why did it not work? Because this two was supposedly connected to one. And if you remove this, right, if you remove this, there is still a dependency on this because it's a cyclic dependency, So there are still nodes which are dependent. So you, you're not able to create a topo sort because what is a topo sort? It is a linear ordering of N vertices, N vertices. So if you do not produce a topo sort of N size, the topo sort that you produce is of size one. So you cannot say that like you can definitely say there is a problem and the only problem that you can have is a cycle. If the topo sort comes out to be exactly having N elements, if the topo sort exactly has N elements, then you can say that it is a directed acyclic graph does not have a cycle. But if the topo sort has anything lesser than N elements, then you can say that it contains a cycle. Very simple. If you're able to generate a topo sort, it means it does not have a cycle. If you're not able to generate a topo sort, it means it does have a cycle, which is causing an issue. So in order to code, what we will go is we'll go to the topo sort code and I'll copy paste it. Okay. Let's copy paste the code into the over here. Now at the end, when the topo sort has been produced, we say, listen, if the topo sort size is equal to equal to N, then it does not have a cycle. Topo sort was produced. Otherwise it does have a cycle. Otherwise it does have a cycle. Now, do we need to store the top sort? No, we don't need, we can just omit this. 
we can omit this and we can probably keep a counter variable something like this instead of having the topo sort stored because we just are concerned about the count so the count is okay i will just quickly have a compilation sorry my bad if we run this it is fine let's quickly submit this and see if it is working fine wow it does so guys i hope you have understood uh, this wonderful uh, concept being applied on detection of cycle in directed graph uh, what about this time complexity and the space complexity it is similar to topo sort we're using an extra space of a q and a in degree which is b go of 2n and then we are using the bfs algorithm which is v plus e for directed graphs so guys i hope i was able to explain you this particular algorithm so just in case i was please make sure you like this video and if you're new to our channel what are you waiting for i think it's it's high time that you hit that subscribe button and if you haven't checked out our dp series and the sg sheet the links are in the description please make sure you check it out and here with this i'll be wrapping up this video let's meet in some other video till then bye bye take care Okay.